Well, here we are in the gym you built, <laughs> Dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you had to sum up this journey, the last almost 10 years in a word, what would you say? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> uh, probably just exciting, actually. That's mm. probably the only word that, um, whether it's good excitement or bad excitement, it's always been exciting. It's always, yeah. So your son came to you when he was around 12 is when he did his first competition. Correct. Do you yeah. remember that day he said, Dad, this is it. This is what I want to do. Um, actually, I might have been the one that drove him to make that decision. Um, it, we were playing soccer, right? He's, he's, I'm coaching him in soccer. And he, every time he got fouled, it was like, there was no, there was no gradation. You know, the, the charts where you're zero to ten, it was always ten, and he was, you know, never got hurt, but it was always ten, and it sounded like devastating, like he had broken an ankle, and we, um, we knew he was very good at weightlifting. At the end, um, it took a little while to realize it, but you know, maybe six months in, he was, without real effort, approaching American records for youth American records, and. Um, we had this goal of going to youth nationals and breaking this. So I was like, look, <laughs> like, maybe it's time to decide because my heart can't handle, you know, every time you go down, it sounds like you've broken a leg or something when you're actually fine, you know. And so um, kind of planted that seed and maybe a few months later he, he comes and says, you know, I, I, I think you're right. I think I just want to focus on this and just do this. and. We actually had the goal in mind of him doing like CrossFit still and maybe even running track later, uh, but that never really panned out because he just kept getting better at weightlifting. So um, that was kind of the, yeah, the, the, the end of it was, was that moment. Yeah. That first meet, he's 12 years old and he sweeps gold. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, local meets are a little different. Uh, the very first meet, it was easy. It was easy. And, and I think it could have been that, that there were only two kids in that weight class and in that um, age group. But at Youth Nationals, which was maybe, I can't remember, it was maybe a year later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was, that was different. Um, there were maybe 50 kids in his age group and weight class. And he just went out there and did what he does. He just lifted weights and very, very passionate, very excited, lots of celebrations. Some really great photos came out of that that I still see pop up on you know, USA Weightlifting side. Or, I was yeah. talking to him about the fact that on the one hand, he's so humble and he's mild-mannered, mm -hmm. a little soft-spoken. Yeah. And then to see those moments where he erupts mm -hmm. and it's big passion, big personality, yeah. you know, after those competitions where he just nails it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's the exciting part, right? Yeah. That's the good exciting part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he handles, he handles failure pretty well too. So it's, um, it's always been good. Yeah. That's a key in sport. It is. It is. Um, the first hard lesson that Hamp learned, um, by my, my recollection is that when something doesn't go right, it's not in your control. It's in the past. You have to focus on what is in your control. And that's the next lift. And, and it took him a while to, if he missed the lift at a competition, to not mm -hmm. start to cry. And, you know, that we have a rule, no crying. If you're crying, you can't lift the weight. And um, that was, you know, if you miss a lift, it, it can be emotional. It's a little, maybe a little embarrassing for someone so young to, to go out and put themselves out in front of everybody. Everybody's focused on them and miss it. And um, I, think, I think that was probably the first lesson I ever learned. Like, oh. hey, that's already happened. It's, it's out there, now go and show everybody what you can do. And he learned that pretty fast and uh, moves on. And uh, do have to remind him sometimes. Hmm. You know. Ted Lasso fans are saying, be a goldfish. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Short memory of a goldfish. Yeah, that, that, that has come out since, and absolutely, I've heard that many times. Uh, yeah. Yes, be but a goldfish. But it's true. And it absolutely is. I, it's really 
good you're bringing this up as a coach, as a dad, because the world watches and celebrates the wins yeah. and sometimes forgets about the pressure, the isolation, you know, yeah. the, the mental health part of it. That's a lot for anybody, but especially for young athletes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, 100%. Um, balance, I would say, we're good at a lot of things and balance hasn't been one of them. Um, and I say we, uh, because, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, um, I, I guess I always remind them like, Hey, if you do this, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so we kind of like, he makes the decision, but, but ultimately, you know, a lot of things go into that decision, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, um, we definitely have influence over his decisions. Um, high school, you go on a trip. I mean, there was the first time he ever won uh, senior Pan American Championships. Um, he was 17. I'm not sure that we've had from USA Weightlifting a youth athlete, technically a youth athlete, win Pan Am Championships. Mm -hmm. The only person actually is another Georgian uh, that I can think of may have been a teenager, uh, Cheryl Hayworth, but um, that was a long time ago. Sports changed quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, and uh, he 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 goes to Ecuador. He competes. I think we finished maybe 8 p.m., 10 p.m. Uh, got back to the hotel and we left on a plane at 4 a.m. the next morning. And that day, uh, when we arrived, he actually went and took his um, uh, SATs. Yeah. Uh, I think we were on a trip when he had, whenever his senior prom was, so he didn't go on senior prom. But, you know, the, the, it's funny at this high level, these kids are competing and doing these things. Um, they, they, they kind of form their own social groups. Mm -hmm. And they are, you know, the, the people that he would hang out with if they lived nearby and, and things like that. Yeah. You know, the sacrifice is really extraordinary for the athletes, but the sacrifice for the family is extraordinary too. Mm -hmm. And your family, in different ways than, than many, you are his coach and yeah. his dad, and you decided to coach him not because you'd always been a weightlifting coach, no. but just because this is what he loved to do. Exactly. Tell me that yeah. story. Well, I mean, I wasn't afraid to do it. Um, and I'd been doing it for a while at the time that we actually reached out to people. And it just wasn't feasible. I, I won't go into the mm -hmm. stories exactly. I, I don't want anybody to whatever. But um, there was nobody that, that really was reasonable about coaching him or we could make the, the time for them to get coached by, for him to get coached by them. So, you know, I just took it up, uh, started learning and we just have gone from there. I had coached uh, CrossFit. Um, I was kind of uh, more interested in, in strength and, and the aspect of, of weightlifting, less on the metabolic conditioning, which is what they're focused on, and, and the gymnastics aspect. I like, you know, the absolute strength work and, and the weightlifting side of things. So it wasn't that I'd never done it at all, but but certainly a one-on-one -on -one situation. I had never coached anyone, and I had never coached anybody at a weightlifting meet. You know, I bought books and and did things to, to make it, I guess, uh, to where I knew enough to do it. And we just learned as we got along, yeah. So. Just enough to <laughs> potentially be at the Olympics. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'd say that's going pretty well for you all. And you know, a self-taught coach who loves his son sure. and and together you guys reach the pinnacle. I hope we do. I hope we do. Uh, we're very, very, very close. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, in some ways I'd say you already have in a lot of ways. Yeah. And there's just maybe more rungs on that ladder you'd like to go together. Yeah, for sure. And um, we can say, you know, he's he's been very accomplished in a lot of ways. So the... I mentioned the the Pan American champion as a youth. Uh, he's the first 
male to win a gold medal at a world championship in at the, over 50 years uh, for the USA. The women on the other side are, are killing it, you know, every year. But the men have, have I don't want to say struggled, but not done as well. There's, our men are good. It's not, I don't want to say that they're not. Um, but they're, they're struggling a history of, uh, of uh, competitors doing things that are not allowed. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to kind of ignore that so we can stay focused. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely have the opinion or, or attitude that it doesn't matter if people are doping. If they don't get caught, it doesn't matter. It's just like when you're playing soccer and someone pulls your jersey, if the referee doesn't see it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not a foul. So um, we kind of have that attitude and, and kind of go about it that way. Yeah. You're going to compete clean. You're going to do it the right way and yeah. trust that things turn out the way they should. Correct. Yeah. And hopefully the cheaters get caught. That's, that's the best you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can't, you can't just point your finger and say, hey, the person that's better than me is doing drugs and that's why they're better than me. A lot of people could do that to Hamp, and we know he's clean. And um, we go through a lot of great efforts to um, make sure that he doesn't ingest anything. Uh, I can remember the first time he, he doesn't get sick. I mean, it was very strange. My child is, I think he's maybe thrown up three times in his life and wow. just has never been sick. And um, he had an injury where he got his eye scraped, and we went in to get it looked at. and. It was our first experience with, hey, you got to check to make sure that that dye you're going to put in his eye is on the approved list and mm -hmm. anything that he takes is on the approved list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. But how great to have a role model who is doing it that right way yeah. and achieving so much yeah. Yeah. without cheating. Yeah, I think it goes to Hamp's uh, personality and his almost... Um, robotic tendencies of, hey, this is what I do today, and I'm going to do it. And even when he doesn't feel like doing it, he does it. Mm -hmm. um, recovery is a big part of that. You know, most 12-year-olds don't want to stretch on their own, but we could always leave him to go and stretch on his own. Didn't have to worry about it. He was going to take care of that. Um, never had a problem with a 10 o'clock bedtime. My daughter, on the other hand, wants to stay up until 1. And, you know, she's trying to balance everything in her life and, yeah. and hamp on you know, 10 o'clock and, and gets up. Um, eh, not, not too much of a problem getting up, but he does get up, uh, sometimes a little later than he, he wants to. But, um, yeah. yeah, but he, he, he takes care of himself. The diet has been a, a real, I mean, like, you know, we, we, there have been birthdays that have been around competitions that we just say, hey, you're going to have your cake after the competition. And if you ask Hemp what a good cheat meal is, he's going to tell you a ramen where I think the rest of the world goes, hey, that's a pretty healthy non-cheat meal item. So, yeah, but ramen's a, that's his favorite cheat meal. Oh, well, that's probably not true. Lasagna probably is his favorite, but, but he does keep that in mind that, like, lasagna is not very often. That's usually ramen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not a lot of protein in ramen or lasagna. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I'm just sitting here as a mom thinking about what it would be like to be in the wings and watch those moments. But I mean, I could tear up thinking about it. Yeah. I just can't even imagine what that's like when you guys have been in it together. You spend, I don't know, 30, 40 hours a week in your family garage, your training. Yeah. You've done this together. You've climbed the ladder together. Help me understand what you feel in those moments where you're beside him and he wins it all. Yeah, I, I, I would uh, be hard-pressed to tell you who's, again, more excited. You know, back to the word that you asked at the beginning. And um, it always is exciting. Like, you, you just are excited for him, excited for what you've done together, what you've seen together. And... Um, yeah, um, I jokingly say that like like my biggest like I get a lot of fulfillment from this, and um, um, I I've even started coaching other kids and things, and and that's why I do it is the fulfillment aspect. But the um, the hugs after a meet or during the meets are um, something that is like it's maybe my favorite part. 
was getting a hug from the kid and uh, even when my daughter when she she lifts you know after she comes off the platform she's real proud of herself she wants to hug and I love that part that's my that's my absolute favorite part it's just yeah doing that together yep being together yep it is a family journey yeah, yeah for sure in every way was there any convincing was everyone on board for let's make the three car garage the training facility <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny, the, the, the garage, um, you know, I, I was telling you about how we were looking at the garages and the basements of houses. Um, we, didn't, we didn't move from our other house. We had a space for him to lift in, in the basement. And um, the, the landlord was lo looking to change things we were renting at the time and um, started looking and and um, I think our original plan was to have one of the bays be for weightlifting, and then it turned into two bays, and then we just finally said, hey, we're just going to make the whole thing a gym. Um, that was kind of easy. I think um, at the time, um, everybody thought that they would use it, but in reality, it's HAMP. It, it's, we don't call it HAMP space because it's not, but um, it is very much weightlifting. And... Um, argue it's one of the best home gyms in the country. Um, we, we have everything. There's nothing here that uh, no one would come here and train and say, oh, I need this, and you don't have that. Um, it, it's got everything. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's been, the whole family has kind of pitched in. So um, I'm sure Hamp probably told you he helped build the, put up the walls and the, the flooring and, things like that, that we have this um, cable pole that's behind you right now that I mean, I thought I was going to die whenever the delivery guy was delivering it and um, getting it off the truck. But we had random people from my job come and help us erect it and, oh. and, and get it in place. And cool. yeah, so um, and that's that's something that, that I've found that the more he goes, the longer he goes, the number of people in our lives that know about it and support him or like they really live for it. Like I've got, I've got a couple of people, you know, at, at work uh, this morning, I had a meeting I told you and um, uh, a couple of people couldn't make it. And I go, well, you know, Hamp's getting interviewed this morning. Maybe, maybe we can just move it to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And, um, they're like, what? And they want to know all about oh, it. Cool. And, 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 you know, they're, they're, yeah, it's, it's a big deal to them. Yeah. And, um, even my, my company that I work for is Finnish, um, it's a Finnish company and the people in Finland are like, they have watch parties. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They really, really, really are into it. So, um, that's been really nice. And I definitely feel supported, you know, like we're going to Thailand this week and, mm -hmm. We're going to be gone two and a half weeks. I feel no stress about walking away for two and a half weeks and just working remote for the, when I can. Yeah. And um, I feel supported by, by everybody. And my wife, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, if Amp talked about it, but um, she works at a CrossFit down the way, CrossFit Douala. And they, I mean, I haven't been the only person to coach Amp. Um, when we first started, um, we we, I was coaching him, and then I was like, oh, you know, I'm I'm the guy that makes him do his homework. I'm the one that makes him you know, go to bed. I'm the one that, you know, is coaching his soccer. You know, maybe I ought to not do this. And that's when I and we did we did actually have someone that, um, at the at the gym, uh, Corinne Francis, that was like, coaching him. Uh, once a week, I think it was once a week, and basically doing it for free. And I was sitting there next to her each time, and I was still programming for him, but she was kind of giving him things to work on. And and it just kind of like, really, like, I'm taking your time, and I'm there. And so I just, we just kind of transitioned to me. And um, I don't remember, maybe three months that, that lasted. Um, but it was kind of a, I would call it co-coaching. Uh, she was definitely helping at the time that we did his first youth nationals. So it was right around that same time. 
and um, she's still in his life. Um, she has, um, you know, Hemp, Hemp is, he's young, he, he, he's uh, maybe one of the smarter people that I know in my life. And, and I've always said that my wife and my son really, like you send them away and they come back with the right answer. It just takes them a little while. And um, my daughter and I are more on the fly kind of people. And, um, but Hemp, um, Hemp maybe struggles in social situations. Um, I don't know if that's because he just hasn't been as many as, as uh, he could have, or if it's just personality. But um, she really, uh, Corinne, no, uh, the owner at CrossFit Duala, she's or one of the owners. Um, she's like, oh, you know, if he's interested in coaching some, you know, he could do it while he's in college. So he's, you know, shattering her here and there, and it requires getting up a little earlier and being alive, and, and maybe that coffee hasn't gotten quite into his bloodstream just yet whenever he starts, but uh, she says he does a good job. He's very interactive and, yeah, interactive and, yeah. and giving good cues, giving good coaching advice to the, the people, but... Uh, after the Olympics, I think he'll do that a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Right now, it's really a focus. It's tunnel vision. Focus. Yeah, it's one hundred percent focus. Yep. Yep. Well, I'm so happy to know you guys, and really looking forward to just following the entire journey. Yeah. You know.